Hello and welcome to this Code Academy walkthrough brought to you by Tech Tutorials by Kyle and we're going to be dealing with the first getting started course. Um, please excuse my voice, I'm a little bit under the weather but uh, that aside, let's get started. So it just tells us to type our type Ryan with quotes around it and press enter. Alright, nice and simple. Now we can use uh, dot length the, the dot length method to find the length of it. So we're just going to type in Ryan again dot length. It returns a value of 4. Uh, now let's do some math. 2 plus 2. Nice and simple. Alright, you can use asterisk for multiplication and slash for division. So 10 divided by 5, 2. Uh, there's some things we can't do in the console. Uh, try typing your name in the command line without any quotes. And it says reference error Kyle is not defined. And we will get into that in a sec about why it does that. So we're going to go on to the next lesson. Uh, the language we're learning is called JavaScript, which is the dominant language of the web. is a very common and also very simple uh, programming language. And that is why is it why Code Academy teaches this first. All right, so it just says enter. Oh, we go there. What you saw was a confirmation window, and we can we can create one just like that by going confirm. Hi. Ah, shoot. There we go. You can also create a pop up. That's just pretty much the same thing, except there's only one choice. Getting. All right, start the next lesson. Uh, now we're going to do the variables. Let's uh, create our first variable called my name. So we're just says uh, try accessing accessing it by typing my name. See what happens. Reference error similar to the one we got earlier. Now the reason it says reference error is because my name was never declared since there's no quotations around it. Uh, it just assumes that my name is a variable, and since it was never declared, we get a reference error. Uh, error. So now let's declare it with a var my name. So like a one. Okay. Now we just declared our name, and now it wants us to store Elizabeth in there. So do the same thing. My name is equal to. That's the assignment equal to symbol. We'll get into that later. Elizabeth, with quotations around it, so cool. Alright. Now it says try typing my name and press enter. And now it should show the name because my name was initialized and a value was stored inside of it. So it says create a new variable called my full name. So we're going to go var my full name is equal to Kyle. Let's try it with a new variable called last name. So we're going to go var last name. And notice when we're creating these variables, uh, we can't put spaces in them. So to make up for that, uh, the first letter is always lowercase. And you can never begin the name of a variable with a number. So it's always a lowercase letter. And then instead of spaces, we just make the next word uppercase, as we see here equals, we're just going to type in the last name, that's what we get. So, uh, last name is a variable, a string such as Joseph is called a literal. Uh, you can treat variables of the same type the same way you treat literals. Alright, now it says to find the length of last name. So we're going to go last name, dot length, we get four. Uh, most of the example variables included in the previous lesson were strings of text, and that is a data type of string. And if you watched my video on strings in Java, then this will be very familiar to you. Let's create a variable called my string. So var my string, and fill it with the text hello. All right. Now with substrings uh, to cut out a part of the string we use the substring method and one very important thing to know is that uh, 
the method starts, the first letter is numbered zero. So basically, as we see here, the example, to get the substring he, you type in hello.substring zero, which means we start with the zero letter, which is the first one, h. And in this one, it's kind of confusing. Uh, the letter of position two is omitted. So we're going zero, one, and then l, which is at two, is omitted. So we're just going to get he. So we're going to do the same thing. Hello, substring zero, comma two. Okay, now we just get he. So now let's get the first three letters of our name. So we're going to type in the name dot substring zero comma three. Now I know this is three this time because we start with zero, one, two, and then three is e, but we omit that one, so it's just going to be kyl. All right. Um, I think I forgot a semicolon. Oh, I forgot to assign it to the variable. So sorry. Var three is equal to Kyle dot substring zero comma three. There we go. Uh, we can also replace words by using the replace method. So it tells us to use, um, and the syntax for that is we'll replace uh, the word we're replacing, and then comma, and then the replacement word. So coding rules, and we want to make it into programming rules. So dot replace. We're replacing coding comma with programming, and there we go. Uh, we talked about how upper and lowercase matter in programming. Uh, we have two uppercase methods and two lowercase methods. Methods. Uh, try changing a string to all uppercase letters. So let's take my name. Dot two uppercase. Oops, forgot the parentheses. There we go. Uh, now we can use numbers. So let's set a variable number to the value 42 or the meaning of life. So var number equals 42. Now let's divide that number by two. So we're just going to do the variable number slash two. Now the modulus symbol. Uh, in programming, we use integer division, which means if we're dividing two integers or whole numbers, the answer is also going to be an integer. Which so say example, we divided five by two. Uh, we're getting now. Normally, we would say that's two point five, but in programming the program would give us an answer of two. Because if we remember back in fourth grade when we did that division thing, uh, we get two remainder one. And basically it's just chopping off the remainder and giving you the answer. What modulus does is the reverse. It just gives you the remainder. So now we're gonna go number mod 10. So it's gonna divide number by 10 and give us the remainder, remainder which is two. So that concludes part one. Uh, stay tuned for part two, and uh, we'll continue. Thank you.